This UFO sighting comes out of Michigan from November the 23rd of 1953. Now on the evening of November the 23rd, the Air Defense Command's ground intercept radar out of Salt Ste. Maria, I hope that's pronounced right, Michigan, picked up an unusual and unidentified target near Solox. While having this object on radar, a F-89C Scorpion jet from Ken Ross Air Force Base was scrambled to investigate the radar return. To verify if there was an object there or if it was some kind of radar false reading. The pilot of the F 89C was First Lieutenant Moncler and with Second Lieutenant Robert L. Wilson acting as the Scorpion's radar operator. Now, First Lieutenant served during World War II in the U.S. Army. After his service, he went to the University of New Orleans but re-enlisted in the military at the start of the Korean War in 1950. He enlisted in the U.S. Air Force this time as an officer pilot trainee. The first lieutenant was sent to Connell Air Force Base in Waco, Texas for his pilot training and then received advanced pilot training at Reese Air Force Base in Lubbock, Texas. And even after that, he got training on the F-89 Scorpion at Tyndale Air Force Base in Panama City, Florida. Now, it's said that Wilson was having a hard time tracking this object on the Scorpion's radar. So, the ground radar operators gave the first lieutenant direction towards the unidentified object. The Scorpion's crew finally closed in on the object at around 8,000 feet in altitude. Now the ground control tracked the scorpion and the object as two defined blimps on their radar screens. They watched as the two blimps grew closer and closer, all the way up until they seemed to merge together. The ground control assumed that the first lieutenant had flown over or under the object. As they watched and waited to see the blimp separate back into two blimps, but the single blimp continued on its way. Now, attempts were made to contact the Scorpion and the First Lieutenant by radio, but without success. A search and rescue operation by both the United States Air Force and the Rural Canadian Air Force that was quickly mounted and with another pilot that was sent out on the search. When the pilot stated that he thought he had heard a radio burst by them about 40 minutes after they had went missing. After all of this, they were never seen again. One of the strangest things about this disappearance is that the IFF signal also disappeared when the two merged on the radar screen. And no crash debris has ever been found to this day. There was a hoax back in 2006 with the Great Lakes Dive Company saying that they had found a crash of the Scorpion from 1953, but it turned out not to be true. It was set off by an email from Preston Miller that was sent to a UFO researcher, Francis Ridge, leading to several UFO researchers looking into this email, as well as several journalists that led to several discoveries that it wasn't the truth and just another hoax. So what do you think happened to the crew and the plane on this report? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all our newest videos. And thanks for watching those endless mysteries.